very much for your warm introduction. Honorable convener, Dr. V.R.S. Sampat, His Excellency Pama Sivam Pillay, Viraj Guri, I hope I pronounced that right, Vaipuri, Vice President of Mauritius, Ministers of Government and former ministers, members of parliament, honorable justices, chancellors, pro-chancellor, business executives, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, good morning. Wanna come? Wanna come? Wanna come? It is with great humility uh, that I greet the distinguished participant of this third World Tamils Economic Conference. I thank the Madras Development Society and especially the intrepid Dr. Sampat for his persistence to ensure that I would be present here my wife, Sita, and I were moved by the generous welcome and the extraordinary hospitality extended to us. I wish to thank the Indian government, the state of Tamil Nadu, and the Lurie Meridian Hotel for making us feel at home. I was pondering what I should be saying to this esteemed gathering today, and after I had a dinner with Dr. Sampat last night, I realized that he wanted me more or less to introduce, uh, not myself, but to introduce Guyana to you, because this might have been the first occasion uh, that Guyana is represented at this very esteemed gathering of businessmen, executive, politicians, professionals who represent the Tamil community. When our forefathers boarded ships at the port of Madras for the West Indies, my own ancestors, Alvar and Viran, those are two beautiful names, left here in 1847 and 1856 respectively. Though that journey started almost two centuries ago, many of us from Malaysia, Mauritius, Fiji, Trinidad, and elsewhere would remember poignant stories that were handed down to us as to why the early immigrants left their homeland. In the Guyana story, it was about a dream of earning big money on the colonial sugar estates and finding gold literally on the streets of Guyana. That was not unexpected since for many centuries before that, Guyana was portrayed as El Dorado, the city of gold. While our, uh, our ancestors did not realize their grand dream. They had laid the foundations of a better life for their offsprings. They also opened the passage to these faraway countries for Indian traders, entrepreneurs, professionals, skilled migrants, and strategic investors. In a sense, this conference is about that big Tamil dream and the experiences that could be shared to strengthen ethnic and cultural bonds, promote new opportunities for networking in fields of education, sports, investment, and business. I want you, dear friends, to re-enter our history and to reassert Tamils 
or madrasis in Guyana, not as unskilled laborers, but as innovators. I would like to see a wide range of skills training and investment in Guyana. I'd like to see for a start a Tamil language school and restaurants that specialize in tasty Tamil food. I can tell you for many years, this the first time I had three or four variety of rice this morning for breakfast with coconut chutney and achar. Because even though we are a rice producing country, we have been inculcated with the disdain for what we produce. And we didn't know how to make what we produce tasty. And it is a shame that as I stand here, I cannot report as prime minister there is a, that there is a single Tamil restaurant in Guyana. So it is an opening for you. And it's also a shame <laughs> that I would spend the two words I know in Tamil before this conference is ended. I, I use one already. <laughs> when I look at your themes, I gather that you have a broader interest that encompasses a wide and lofty vision of the world and the role of Tamils in shaping its destiny. It is visionary that you should place among the sub-themes subjects such as ITC and the web, the law and professional ethics, and women education as catalysts for economic development. I congratulate you for this broader vision. Where does country like Guyana fit into the vision? Firstly, I assure you that we share the ideas that you seek to generate at this conference as they accord with our own vision of a law-governed, democratic, knowledge-based, and socially-driven modern society. Secondly, in the global investment perspective, Guyana's geographic location holds many attractions. It is the only English-speaking country in South America, a gateway to the vast continental market. And sitting on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean, Guyana is a vital link to the Caribbean. Guyana is both a Caribbean state and a South American country. Foreign investors from as far as Australia, Russia, and China who are active in our bauxite, gold, and forest sectors, they recognize this link. For prospective Tamil investors, I invite you to see the bigger picture. Guyana, Suriname, and Trinidad are not only neighboring states. Combined, almost one half of our population is made up of people of Indian ancestry, of which Tamils or Madrasis form a minority. But unless you see us as a larger sub-region, you would not be interested in developing direct air link or shipping lines to our countries. We will continue to be apart and distant in June, I told the Gopio Convention in New York that we are relatives. Today, I want to ask you, Tamils or Tamilians, should we remain apart? Your Excellencies and esteemed participants, I have come here to have an honest conversation with you on how Guyana can share your vision and how we can benefit from your immense capital, technological, cultural, and human resources. I want to assure you 
that you are all welcome to invest in Guyana. I have brought with me a flash drive with a PowerPoint presentation that I would ask Dr. Sam